Hello everyone. I am Nishikant Mohanty, a quantum technology student at University of Technology, Sydney. This is my presentation on quantum approximate optimization algorithm, aka as QAOA. In the course of this presentation, I'm going to discuss understanding of QAOA and the circuit building approach. So, on the course of this discussion, we will cover the following contents. What is combinatorial optimization? QAOA algorithm background. QAOA steps. The max cut problem in terms of QAOA. The choice of unitaries for constructing QAOA circuit. The choice of gates constructing a QAOA circuit and a two qubit sample QAOA circuit. Let's start with an overview of combinatorial optimization. By definition, combinatorial optimization is a process of searching maxima or minima of an objective function f whose disk domain is a discrete but a large configuration space. We will go to the mathematical definition in the next slide, but the examples of combinatorial optimization are traveling salesman problem, bin picking, linear integer programming. These problems are traditionally called as NP hard problems and is quite difficult and cumbersome to solve using normal computer or a classical computer. QOA, however, helps us solve these problems in a much manner using quantum calculations. Let's come to the definition of combinatorial optimization. So as we said, combinatorial optimization is consisting of an objective function CZ with N bits and N clauses. CZ is a function of C alpha Z, where C alpha Z is one when it satisfies a clause and zero when it doesn't satisfy a clause. And Z is the bit string, which belongs to zero and one for all the numbers or all the bits that belongs to the set. So our goal is to find max or min of the CZ. QOA in the terms tries to find good enough result. That means it tries to get the ratio of CZ to max of CZ to be a good or large enough so that we obtain a good enough result or a good enough optimization. So before we introduce QAOA, we introduce two unitary operators, U of HC gamma and U of HB beta. Now gamma and beta are angles which are used to rotate the state vector of the quantum circuit. Now, we define gamma and beta are angles and this unitary operators as e to the power negative i gamma c and e to the power negative i beta b. Now, since the, term, the, uh, the terms of these functions commute because they are diagonal on computational basis. And since C has integer values, we can restrict the angle to lie between 0 and 2 pi, which means we can say the gamma should lie between 0 and 2 pi. Similarly, for the second unitary operator, which gives us a rotation about the x-axis, we define the parameter beta or the angle beta. Now, again, in the second term, it also, the, the terms com uh, commute and this, this sigma x is basically the poly x operator and whose summation is given by the Hamiltonian h of beta. Now we can restrict this beta to lie between 0 and pi for a x-axis complete rotation of 2 beta or a 0 to 2 pi. These things will make sense in the later course as we use or employ these unitary operators to construct the QAOA circuit.
now let's briefly touch the steps we form to steps we decide to form a QoA. We decide the round of optimizations or we decide the number of iterations which is called P. We have a set of angles gamma and beta and we have a C alpha Hamiltonian which is used to define the QoA circuit. Now steps are as follows. We initialize all the qubits into a superposition state and for each step of the optimization which is between P or number of steps we apply gamma and beta sequential. Now we create a quantum state which is constructed with gamma beta C alpha and summation of this gives us the expectation value of the quantum circuit. Let's do it in a simple way. We start with a superposition of all qubit which is basically applying Hadamard on each qubit. Then we initialize the parameter P and pick up a angle gamma and beta. Then we apply the second unitary operator. We apply the of unitary operators gamma, H of C gamma and H of B beta alternate fashion till we reach P. And we measure the measure the state vector or the computational basis to obtain the value of Z or the bit string. And since we obtain the value of Z and then we feed back again to the computer. And we repeat the steps number of times till we reach P. Now here important to observe is that for any expectation, the expectation value of the cost function is given by F of gamma beta which is basically a state vector of gamma beta, cost Hamiltonian and again the state graph of the gamma beta. Now with enough repetition we can produce a string Z with CZ and which is near or greater than FP or basically we can reach to a maximum value of FP for a certain gamma angle gamma and beta. Let's discuss the circuit diagram of QAOA. As we said previously, we initialize all the qubits. Let's say all are initialized in the zero state. Then we apply Hadamard on each qubit to put them into superposition state. Then we apply the first unitary operator e to the power i gamma. Then we apply e to the power i beta and we keep on repeating till we reach P and in the end we measure the bit strings. The steps they show the H is basically the Hadamard then the unitary operator gamma and then the unitary operator beta and then it measured till P the last one is the measurement. Quite simple circuit diagram. We will discuss it in the later slides how to form it using proper gates that is available in the current quantum computing scenario. Now, the question is how do we choose how do we choose P? Now, as we know, P is the number of rounds of optimization. Now, let's say MP is the maximum value of FP or the maximum value of the state vector or that is for the angle gamma and beta. Now, from adiabatic theorem, we can prove that MP as P tends to infinity is max of CZ. So if P is large enough, we can obtain an exact solution. But if we give uh, P a little bit, a finite number of steps or a finite cutoff, we can reach an approximate solution. Then the second question is, how do we obtain gamma and beta? How do we decide on the ga angles gamma and beta? So for an arbitrary strip in the process of QoA circuit where the angles are gamma i and beta i and the unitaries are u of hp beta i and u of hc gamma i and we know from the previous slide is that the max of uh, if the mp is uh, cz max. So we need to find uh, angles gamma and beta for which the function fp could be maximum. 
Now, there are no fixed methods to find these gamma and beta for a QoA circuit. However, the creators of this algorithm, Farai and Goodman, they suggested that we can use a classical algorithm to evaluate gamma and beta. And one of such classical algorithm is grid search. And for a fixed number of P, or we say, say we say finite cutoff of. We will now look into how we employ QoA to solve a combinatorial optimization problem called max cut. The max cut, as you see, is basically dividing graph into two parts so that between the two sets, the number of edges crossing them is maximum. So as you can see, this graph, the small graph is converted into this graph with two sets of uh, vertices and these and the number of edges crossing between the vertices is maximum. We want to solve this problem using QAOA. So how do we define this max cut problem? Now max cut is also a combinatorial optimization problem or it's a discrete maximization problem. So the cost Hamiltonian of the max cut is given by half of zi zj summation of over uh, summation of half of zi zj and where half of zi zj is uh, one for if the edge between j and k is a cut and if it's not a cut then it's uh, sorry it says it's a cut it's a minus one if it's not a cut it's one so we again have the same problem we get zi z the whole value of the function reduces to one or zero depending on the satisfiability and not satisfiability thus it can be effectively it is very similar to qoa and can be modeled in, in the fashion of qa OA. now how do we apply qa OA in max cut so we know the Pauli z operator is the matrix one zero zero minus one and this can be substituted, this matrix can be substituted with the, the Z of the post Hamiltonian of the max cut. And thus this qubit uh, for each qubit that yields is my one or minus one as we assign it into a partition. Or we can just now simply say that since the cost function again reduces to produces one and zero, we can effectively use the poly z operator. Now here, we assume that we assign each qubit to each of the vertex of the graph, Ising model. Now, Ising model is a model of a quantum system where the particles are arranged in a grid-like fashion with their respective spins, which, which, which can be plus one or minus one. And the cost function of this Ising model is given by this thing, hc equal to minus of j of ij, sigma z, sigma i, sigma z, and h of i, sigma x, where i and j are adjacent particles. Now for simplicity, we can take j ij is one, and it is supposed to be a ferromagnetic behavior. And we can say HI is a transverse external magnetic field which is applied on this system. And we, for simplicity, we can assume there is no external magnetic field. So there is no influence on the system currently. So the second term reduces to zero. And now we will see how we will organize or obtain the unitaries of QOA. So as we define, we have the unitaries h of c gamma equal to e to the power i gamma h c. So this is basically e to the power i pi gamma z i z j. So with this, we can create a Hamiltonian or we can create a matrix like with diagonal elements like this. So to achieve this matrix, 
we can use the control Z operator. Now, as you see, the control Z matrix is all diagonal element except the last diagonal element is minus one. So which is e to the power i pi. Now, if we say it's, it's a diagonal matrix, we can model this as this one, e to the power i gamma pi. Now to obtain the other terms, we can use the x rotation or the poly x operator. Now we multiply an x operator, it gives another term, which is i gamma pi. Now we multiply another one x, then it goes to the second term. Now if we continuously modify all that term, then we can obtain for the whole set of terms in the diagonals. So this is the basic circuit of a two qubit QA circuit and you can see the zero qubit and this is the first qubit. This is a control Z operator with a gamma there and then we apply another X gate. We apply a control Z gate, we apply a control X gate uh, and define this, this 0 0.5 is basically an angle that is used only for the reference purpose that we have initialized a control Z gate with an angle 0 0.5. We applied another X gate rotation, then we apply another Z gate rotation, then we apply another X gate rotation, again Z gate rotation, and you can see this is all these four terms will give us all the diagonal elements of that. This all completes the reference of QOA, and you can easily look into the references that I have compiled for obtaining this presentation. And secondly, I have sourced most of this presentation from the from a lecture uh, by Kai Wang and Dominic Fluet in the University of Waterloo. And if that is available to you, you can reference to that as well. Thank you for listening to this presentation. That's all from my side.